Hello, welcome to Cubase 4 Tutorials. My name is Mickey and in this segment I'm going to show you key commands and talk about importance and how to use them. I'm going to start first with showing the basic ones that I find very useful and I use them all the time. And I'll start with the function keys. The function keys on the keyboard start with F2, which is a transport bar. Then F3 you have a mixer, F4 is your connection inputs. Under F5, I believe, by default was Media Bay, but I switched it to Devices. Many, many times you need to check something, you need to open, you need to change, and I found it useful to be right there. F8 is Video, F11, VST Instruments, and F9. I actually put uh, Audio Mix down under F9. So, I already actually shown you few that I customize, so I'm going to show you actually how to do that. The full list of key commands can be found under File. And going down to Key Commands. And you'll see the new window with all these folders that have all the commands available. So if the command is in this list, it's available to have a shortcut on your keyboard. So. Let me show you how to find, for example, key commands. You can type in key in the search engine and it will find the first word that says key or will keep on looking to every word until you find the proper one, key commands. I already put key to that, so I'm going to delete it here and show you how to do it. So in this space here, you're going to select that space and press the actual key. At that moment, you have to do the assignment, assign key, and it's done. If there is any kind of a collision between the, the, the commands, before you assign it, it will tell you here that it's assigned to a certain other thing. And you can go back and select it. Let's say if I decided to put A, it will say, hey, it's assigned to audio, I just fade to range, and if I press select, it will take me to that thing. So if I want to change or do something else, I can actually just simply fast go there. If I want to find the command right away, I need to know exact name. So type in key commands, watching my spelling, and it will come right there. And that's pretty much it. So by pressing K, it will come up and which is very useful not all of them actually do that some of them you have to turn off by either using the X or, or some other available command that they have in the window um, next thing to do would be to save the preset Cubase comes with all the presets here the clear all Cubase classic Cubase 5 logic rendering macros sonar key commands. All these other ones I have created. Why? Because that's the way I'm going to actually make a difference between my key commands. I can save them, I can actually back them up and, and take them anywhere with me and have them installed on any computer that I work on all the time or if I'm visiting somewhere doing a job for a client I can actually have my preset ready. So if I want to save to that I'm going to press here Window pops up and I'm going to type in the name of that preset. It's already existing. Okay, overwrite. And that's it. If I want to delete any of these, let's say this one, just delete it and it's gone. Next one, delete it and it's gone. Here would be the import command file. So it's basically now browsing for our key command. Which brings me to the next part of this. Where are they stored and how to find them? Well, working a long, long time with Steinberg, I actually uh, created some habits, some of good, some of bad. But I have a shortcut to Steinberg folder here, which is program files in Steinberg on your installation drive. Cubase 4, go to presets, and there's a key commands. Now, these are the commands that are actually so-called current, the ones that, that come with the, with the Cubase out of the box. If you're looking for the one that you actually created, or in this case, what I've created for myself, I have to go to my computer 
operating system drive document settings user I have to have the hidden files viewable and then application data go down to Steinberg go to Cubase 4 go to presets key commands and voila this is it now I can actually save that back that up and take it with me all I have to know is this path okay in other words go one step back and just say right click key commands send to desktop and bang you can have your shortcuts so you can easily uh, next time find them and uh, create backups once we start working we start actually creating a bunch of different shortcuts it's good to actually keep track of what's what and then have it actually printed out or written and keep on your desk I'm gonna show you a few really good ones that are in use every day like G and H that's gonna be fastest way to zoom in and out and uh, really find your way around your project numeric keypad is your transport and there is a list in the manual for all the details obviously the M stands for mute S for solo R is for actually recording so that arms actually the uh, record enabled there's one thing that's missing by default and that's monitoring I added alt M to that so I can easily actually monitor depending of course how, what monitoring style I've chosen I've chosen manual so I added alt M there very useful command to know is uh, P what P does is actually putting the locators to selection so if I select all of these guys and press P, P will place left and right located to the beginning and the end of all the files. Another shortcut that deals with locators is L. It puts the cursor to the beginning of selected part. So if I have many, many parts and my project is really lengthy, I can use my arrows to go up and down and say, okay, just put L on this guy or select this put L and I'm I'm at the top working so it looks like boring stuff but it it helps speed up your workflow it helps to actually get things done it helps the idea being uninterrupted uh, when you know actually how your tool is working thanks for joining me in this tutorial Cubase 4 and I hope to see you soon again